too. Seem to be, people seem to be very confused as to what love is. Love rejoices in the truth, the Bible says. We're to tell people the truth in love. So if someone is a child molester, we should tell the child molester in love, you are in trouble with God, child molester. You need to stop molesting children. This one girl was telling me over here, why can't we just all live our lives how we want to? Well, just let the child molester live his life how he wants to. Let the uh, fornicator and the, the rapist, let the rapist live how they want to. I've seen sin before. We, we can let everybody live however they want to. Well, you can live how you want, but I'm out here to tell you, you're going to go to hell for it. If you want to live, if you want to live as a sinner, you're going to go to hell as a sinner. If you want to live as a filthy, lip-lip homosexual, you're going to go to hell for uh, being a homosexual. But the love of God, the love of God is that none should perish, that all should come to eternal life. That should all should turn and repent. God wants you guys to be saved, but you can't be saved in your sin. You can't be saved as a homo. You can't be a homo and be saved. You can't be a drunkard and be saved. You can't be a liar and be saved. You can't be a fornicator and a porn watcher and be saved. You must come out. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, chapter 6, Come out from above them and be separate, says the Lord. Put no unclean thing and I will receive you. The Bible says, 2 Corinthians chapter 6, Do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. A fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness. And what communion has the light with darkness? And what accord has Christ with Delilah? Or what part has a believer with an unbeliever? And what agreement has a temple of God with idols? Come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. Do not touch with it what is unclean and I will receive you. God is willing to forgive you if you come out from among them. Come out from among the pervert. Come out from among the filthy. Come out from among the defiled. Come out from among the the uh, fornicating, homosexual, porn watching, queer. Stop being part of that. If you come out from those perverts, God's able to cleanse you. God has a benevolent love for all mankind. God wants you to be saved. Jesus said, how often I want to gather you. As a hen gathers its chicks under its wing. God wants to gather you together, but you are not willing. You're not willing to be to gather together. God can't make you submit. God can't make you turn. We all have a free will. God made us in His image and He gave us a free will. You can choose to be filthy or you can choose to be born again. It's your choice. And when you find yourself in a devil's hell, it'll be your choice for going there. It'll be your choice for going to hell. God's calling all men everywhere to repent. God wants you to repent. If you don't repent, God won't relent. If you don't turn, you're going to burn. Those are the consequences for your sin. God doesn't want you to go to hell. It's your choice to repent. These people are weird. These people are queer. I wouldn't trust my dog with these queers. If they could do that sick stuff to each other, what might they do to my dog? I can't help their defiles. I can't help you like to do things that are disgusting and perverted. Watch out, watch out. No, you didn't. You guys want to make, you guys want to make animals gay so that you can be gay. Oh, the penguins are queer. The animals are queer so we can be queer. No, no, no. God made them Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve, or Karen and Sharon. God never made one homo. God never made one sinner. Sin, sin is abnormal. It's abnormal to be a sinner. Sin is transgression of God's law. It's not normal. It's not normal to get drunk. It's not normal to suck cigarette smoke into your lungs. Your lungs were made 
or air, oxygen. It's not normal to hold your, your genitals in your hand and stroke yourself while you watch an image on, on TV, when you watch your porno. It's not normal to do that. It's disgusting. Yeah, we're trying to be nice. Yeah. I'm being nice. I know you guys have a lot of pins. Don't be homosexual. Hey, you homosexuals need to go straight. Yeah, you're a switch hitter. You're, you're, you're confused. Switch hitters are confused. They don't know which tool is which. They don't know which tool to you. No. Jesus told a woman caught in adultery. He told the woman caught in adultery, go and sin no more. That's what Jesus said. I don't know why they don't read these verses in church to you guys. Go and sin no more is what I'm out here to tell you to do. If you're a homo, a lot of homos up here. That's why I'm preaching on homos. A lot of homos up here. Probably, probably a lot of STDs up here. They say in college, they say in college, one in three has an STD. You can go one, two, three, STD. One, two, three, STD. That's how that works. But the worst STD you could ever get, the worst STD known to man, is sexually transmitted damnation. It's a spiritual thing. It's a spiritual damnation. And each one of you fornicators, homosexuals, have it. I used to have an STD like that. We know you do. Because I used to be a fornicator. I gave it up. I got married. I got married. So I no longer have sex outside of marriage. I'm, I'm having sex inside of marriage. And that's what God wants. God wants you to get married if you desire to have sex. Have sex inside of marriage. Have normal sex. The Bible says the marriage bed is undefiled. But Psalm of Sol Psalm of, or, uh, Ecclesiastes says, let us hear the conclusion of the matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. For this is man's all. For God will bring every work into judgment, including every secret thing, whether good or evil. God's going to judge your life. God's going to judge these people's lives. What's going to happen a hundred years from now when they're dead? Where are these people's souls going to be a hundred years from now? Which most homosexuals aren't going to make it a hundred years. A homosexual die a lot sooner than normal people because they have diseases. They have a thing called uh, prolax rectum, where your rectum comes outside of your butt because the anus is not made for that. It's filthy. That's, just a, that's what happens behind closed doors. They can't hold their poop back anymore because they use their anus wrongly. It's filthy. And our nation, our, our nation has let it get out of control because there aren't any good men to stand up. Where'd all the good men go? What happened to all the godly men who stand up for truth and righteousness? Instead, they all power. If you're a Christian, stand up for the truth. If you're a man or woman of God, stand up for the truth. Why are there no Christians on campus? Where are the Christians at? That called the Bible up and say, here's the word of God. Read it and obey it. Obey the Bible. Jesus became the author of eternal salvation for all those who obey him. These people that listen to this nasty music, they live a nasty way. Look at these people's friends. Look at how they act. Look at their friends. We've got unicorns. We've got lip wrists and busy boys. We've got people dressed up like, like guys like girls and girls like guys. It's because they're confused. They have a debased mind. You know, if, it, if there's a hole in the wall, and they can stick it in the hole in the wall to make themselves feel good, they'd be humping the wall all day. Because they don't know any truth. They have a debased mind. Homosexuals walk around like, whatever feels good, I'll do it. If it makes my pee, -pee happy, I'll do it. Whatever makes me feel good. That's why they talk to my life. That's why homos start to molest little children because they get a debased mind and they want to take advantage of the innocent. They can't keep their little pervert thinkers to themselves. 
Because once you start using it to put it, once you start having clear sacks, the sky's the limit. And Leviticus 18.22, right after it says homosexuality is an abomination, it says having sex with animals is an abomination too. You know why it says that? Because if you're so debased, if your mind is so warped you can have sex with a man with a man, a woman with a woman, then you might want to have sex with animals too. You might want to have sex with a, a knot in a board. Oh, I saw the board with a knot hole in it. I'm going to have sex with it. Oh, yeah. Feels good? Yeah. Because you guys are perverts. You're filthy perverts and you need to repent. of your sins. Give up your filthy perversion. Go and sin no more. Jesus burned two cities because of people like you. Jesus burned two cities to the you, people. I thought you're a bro, you filthy sinner. You're of the devil. You're a filthy devil. Filthy devil. First John 3 8. First John 3 8 for you, filthy devil. You filthy devil. He who sinned. I didn't come out here to fight you, filthy pervert. He who sins of the devil. You guys are sinners because you're of the devil. You're on your way to hell. Go and sin no more before a worse thing happens to you. The worst thing that's going to happen is to fall into the pit of fire. There you go. I feel bad for this officer. All these homosexuals and queers up here. It ain't safe up here if you're normal. There's not very many normal people up here. I thought I'd come visit the campus. I thought homosexuals were accepting of everybody. I thought these homos would accept me as I am. But instead, they don't accept me. They don't accept me as I am. I thought the gay people loved everybody. But they won't accept me. You guys won't accept me for being how I am. I wish I could be part of the club, too. The truth of it is, homos only accept people who are queer. They only accept people who are okay with them being queer. And I'm not okay with them being queer. And guess who else? Jesus is not okay with them being queer. Jesus is against them. Jesus is going to throw them into fire. He's going to throw... Hey, where, hey, Jesus loves everybody. Where do the rapists go when they die? Where do the molesters go when they die? You have a false doctrine. Where are they going to go? No, no, no. I'm asking you. Where, do the, where does the child molester go? Where does the child molester go? You're a hypocrite. You don't know. I can read you the Bible, you hypocrite. You're a hypocrite. You're a hypocrite. No one said that more. You're a hypocrite. You don't know the truth. You don't know the truth. You don't know the Bible. No, you don't. Oh, read it. Read it. Read the Bible. Hey, Christian. Don't touch me. Don't touch me. Hey, where does the homosexual go when they die? Where does it go when they die? Read the Bible. The homosexual will go to hell. The homosexual will go to hell. You need to read the Bible. I'm reading the books to you. Hey, for being a Christian, you don't know where homos go when they die? You're not safe. Where do drunkards go when they die? Where do drunkards go when they die? Where do drunkards go? It says drunkards don't go to heaven. Don't talk to me, Lesbo. Stop being a lesbian. Go and sin no more. Hey, don't touch me. She's been trying to touch me. I must be attracted to her. Maybe I can make her go straight, Jeff. Too bad I'm already taken. I'm already taken, girls. I'm already married. There's no going straight with you girls. No, I'm, mar I'm married to a beautiful woman. The Bible says, fornicators, idolaters, adulterers, homosexuals, thieves, covet, drunkards, revilers, will not inherit the kingdom of God. Well then, where does the homosexual that dies their sin go when they die? Yeah, but God said what, hey, God said who's going to go to heaven and who's going to go to hell. Yes, murderers go to hell too. But I'm talking about homos, and you got to realize, I'm talking about homos because i got a homo crowd here. So I'm talking about a homo crowd. i got to be relevant. I don't want to talk 
talk about telling lies. There's a homeless over here. Huh? Yes, you are. Isaiah 50, you don't read your Bible. I can't believe you read your Bible. Isaiah 58 says, cry aloud, stare not. Lift your voice like a trumpet. Tell my people their transgressions. Tell, tell, no. Are you listening? Are you listening? I like to fuck niggas. And the house of Jacob, their sin. I'm telling them, I'm telling them, they're on their way to hell so they can repent and get born again. Jesus died to save them from sin, but they have to repent. I'm telling them, the Bible says by the fear of God, men depart from evil, so they need to fear God. They need to be, they need to be terrified you're going to go to hell. That's how it works for me. A homeless, a, a street preacher told me you're going to go to hell. I said, yeah, that's probably true. And he said, you need to repent of your sins. And I said, what sin? And he said, well, being a homo sin, lying sin, drunkenness of sin. I said, I'm going to go through, I'm going to try this. I'm going to try to stop it. I'm going to give it up. And when I gave up my sin, I got born again. I got right. I got right with God. And because, that's filthy. That's filthy. I, if there's nothing wrong with calling that filthy, that's filthy. And God hates it. And God adds it with the wicked every day. Psalm 711. Psalm 711. The Bible says God is a just judge, and God is angry with the wicked every day. So God's angry with the wicked. God wants the wicked to repent, but if they don't repent, He's going to throw them into hell. That's why I'm here. I want you people to repent. I want you guys to stop sinning. Homosexuality is an abomination to God. Homosexuals need to go straight. Homosexuals need to get born again. Homosex is abnormal. It might feel good. It might feel good to be a pervert. It might feel good to be a queer. It might feel good to touch yourself while you watch porno. But it ain't right. It ain't right. God says it's wrong. And God makes right and wrong. Without God, there can't be right and wrong. There's just structures in society. But God makes absolute standards. The only way there can be an absolute standard and absolute right and wrong is if there's an eternal being making law. God makes eternal law. That's good, you got a Bible. Someone is telling them the truth in love that they might be born again. I know, one 
313. I know. Hey, throw, throw the Revelation 319 real quick in there. I'll give you that. He, Jesus said, Jesus, John 316, Jesus said, those I love, ready? Jesus said, those I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous and repent. I, I love her, yeah, but most people go to hell. Hey, most people go to hell. He died for her, but she doesn't benefit from it because she won't repent. Hey, he's mad as hell at the wicked, the Bible says. Psalm 5.5 says that God hates the worker of iniquity. God hates the worker of iniquity. God hates the worker of iniquity. That's what the Bible says. I can't help it if people don't read the Bible. Hey, turn to Psalm, turn to Psalm 5. five. Go turn to Psalm 5. five. God hates the worker of iniquity. He doesn't hate the iniquity, he hates the worker of iniquity. Who, who does he throw into hell? Does he, does he throw the sinner into hell? Does he throw the sinners into hell? Do sinners go to hell or does the sin go to hell? Everybody says, well, God loves the sinner, hates the sin. Gandhi said that. Gandhi said that. Not in the Bible. Not in the Bible. God has a benevolent love for all mankind and he has a hatred towards sinners. What the Bible says. There's nothing wrong with having a hatred. God has a holy hatred and he wants you guys to turn from your sin. You ought to be scared. You ought to have fear. You ought to be fearful and trembling that you're going to go to hell. Instead, you that's right. Nobody cares. You're not fearful. You don't have any fear. And when God comes back, the Bible says Jesus is going to come back as flaming fire, taking vengeance on all those who know not God and on those who don't obey him. God's going to return in flaming fire. God's going to come back and put people to hell. I don't want you guys to go to hell. So turn from your sin and live. Turn from your uh, filthiness. Turn from your porno addiction. Turn from your disrespect. Turn from your masturbation. There you go. Turn from all of your wickedness, your drunkenness, your lying. It's not worth whacking off to go to hell. It ain't worth it. That's a bad trade. You're going to get a little whacking off, a little orgasm, and you're going to go to hell forever for it. It ain't worth it. I mean, I'm no, I'm no rocket scientist, scientist here, but I know it ain't worth it. Yeah, you guys are perverted. There you go. Man, I, I, hey, it's my first time here, and I'm everybody's number one preacher. They keep doing this to me. They must think I'm their number one preacher. Man, it's just wild. Came the whole way up here, and everybody tells me I'm number one. I will burn your Give up your sin. Get your Bible. That's the problem. That's the problem, you guys kissing girls, kissing boys. I'm trying to tell you it's going to cost you your soul. You're trading your soul for orgasm. You're not very intelligent. You're not very intelligent. I don't know how this school operates when you got so many people who are not very intelligent. Maybe they have the feeler room. Let's all go to the feeler room and rub something. Oh, I feel good. I'm in college. Because you guys don't think very good. Your brains ain't working. All, the only thing that you guys do is whatever makes your pee pee feel good. Yeah, there you go. This is the generation you people are raising right here. A bunch of perverted feelers. I wouldn't let my dog lick you guys. Who knows? Oh, the dog might lick it. Oh, it feels good. Oh, I gotta do the dog now. Because you guys have no restraint. You have no restraint. You guys have a debased mind. I think we ran into a bunch of reprobates today, Jeff. I thought there'd be some people up here that have a humble heart, but now it's probably just a bunch of reprobates. We're trying to uh, implore you. We're trying to implore you on Christ's behalf. Be reconciled to him. Jesus, we preach, warning every man, teaching every man in all wisdom, that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. That's Colossians 128. I'm giving you guys Bible verse. The grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us that, denying ungodliness and worldly lust. We should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present age. Looking forward to the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, 
who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from every lawless deed, and purify for himself his own special people, zealous for good works. If you don't have the grace of God in your life that allows you to live soberly, righteously, and godly, you're not saved from sin. You're not saved. You're in trouble with God, sir. We're doing the work of God. We've got our side. This guy has worldly sorrow. The Bible says, Godly sorrow produces repentance, leading to salvation, not to be regretted. Worldly sorrow leads to death. So you need to have a godly sorrow over your sin. You need to start hating your sin. You need to start hating what God hates and loving what God loves. God loves righteousness. God didn't create you to be a pervert. God didn't create you to be a homo. God didn't create you to be a drunkard. God didn't create you to be a child molester. God didn't create you to be filthy. He created you to be a woman. He created women for men and men for women. Inside of a marriage relationship. That's what God created. But you guys have perverted yourself. You've perverted your nature. You've perverted your nature. Hey, come over here and stand with the homos. That's what you approve of, right? Go stand with the homos, buddy. Well, you're, you're filthy. You're approving of that. Romans 132 says if you approve of it, you're just like them. You're just like them. Go sit over there. Go over there and hang out with them. They need to be repentant. I'm not terrorizing them. These people are filthy. They're okay with you. I'm not touching him. Why would I touch him? I didn't come here to fight anybody. I came here to tell you to repent. I didn't come here to fight anybody. I'm not in the UFC, man. Yeah, I give up on my sin. I used to be wicked. I used to be a sinner. I give up my sinner. I give up my sin. I'm not turning against God. I told people to go and sin no more. The Bible says, doing the righteous judgment of God, that those who practice such things are deserving of death, not only do them, but also approve of those who practice them. So, if you approve of homosexuality, you're the same as a homo. You're the same as they are. John 8, 11. Go and sin no more. Jesus said, go and sin no more. Two times. John 5, 14. John 8, 11. Jesus said, stop your sinning. Hey, you listen to what I'm saying? Go and sin no more, sinner. I'm not a terrorizer. These people are filthy. Are you putting your finger on me? Are you yelling at me? You better watch out what happens, buddy. You better watch out, man. If you mess with a man of God, you might get something you don't want. Go to your sin. Go your sin. Go and sin no more. Don't put your finger in my face. God wants all of us to be born again. God wants us to be saved. God wants us to all turn. If we don't turn, we'll burn. Homosexuality is abomination to God. God wants us to repent and be born again. What sin is worth your soul? What sin are you worth going? What sin is worth going to hell for? When you're in hell, you'll be in hell one minute. You'll be in hell one minute and you'll say, was it worth it? It wasn't worth being a homo. It wasn't worth being a drunkard. It wasn't worth being a liar. It wasn't worth it. There's no sin worth going to hell for. There's no amount of sex worth going to hell for. There's no amount of masturbation and porno watch that's worth going to hell for. There's no amount of lying that's worth going to hell for. There's no amount of drunkenness worth going to hell for. Don't go to hell. Give up your sin. Give up your sin. Jesus, Jesus can cleanse you from all unrighteousness. The Bible says Jesus is manifested to destroy the works of the devil in your life. The works of the flesh are evident. Fornication, idolatry, adultery, homosexuality. Jesus came to destroy those works. Jesus came to set you free from sin. The Bible says, he who is in the Son is set free. He came to set you free from your sin. Oh, I think that you're going to go there. I don't want you to go to hell. It ain't worth going to hell for your sin. It ain't worth going to hell for your sin. The Bible says, if you abide in my word, you are my disciples, you shall know the truth, 
and the truth shall make you free. Jesus said, whoever commits sin is a slave to sin. And Jesus came to set you free from sin. Jesus came to set you free from your sins. Therefore, if the Son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. Jesus can set you free from your sins. Give up your sins. Your sin is an abomination to God. The reason sinners are in trouble with God is because they choose to sin. Adam and Eve didn't make you a sinner. Adam and Eve didn't make you a sinner. You chose to sin. Every single person here has chosen to sin. Maybe your parents didn't teach you properly. Maybe you had a wicked TV growing up with wicked, wicked movies on it. But every person has been taught how to sin. They've been taught to do what feels good. And I'm calling you out here to tell you to stop it. Turn back. Turn to Jesus. Turn back. If you turn from your sin, God will have mercy on you. He can abundantly pardon you. God wants what's best for you. He doesn't want you to go to hell. He doesn't want you to end up in the lake of fire. But if you don't turn, turn away from your sin. If you don't give up your wicked homosexuality, it's going to cost you everything. The Bible says homosexuality is an abomination to God. The base mind people have are homos. It says malachoid, arsenicotype, man with man in bed with a, with a woman. Same way.